Over the past couple months, I've been putting some miles on the DT44 Stealth Turbo. To date, I have about 5,000 miles on the truck. Been taking it through daily driving scenario, highway, spirited drives, all that to see what the turbo can do. From where I'm sitting, the boost response is no different than that of stock. You can lug this thing all the way down to 1200, 1150 RPM, lay into it, turbocharger lights right away. You'll see in a couple of seconds the footage I have. The turbo spools very quick. One thing I really want to commend this turbocharger on for is how well it responds. The spool up is identical to stock. It really goes to show you how well the compressor and turbine wheels are matched to this setup. You can hand your keys to your girlfriend, your wife, your babushka. They can get in the truck. You don't have to drive around the turbocharger. You don't have to wait for it to spool. It's not laggy. It's not smoky. It drives exceptionally well. Like I said, very close to stock, if not indistinguishable from stock. It's just when you lay on it up top, it's got a lot more air to make big power. The only other turbocharger on the market right now is the Garrett Power Max, and while it does boast a larger compressor wheel, it retains the stock exhaust line. Calibrated Power has gone through and done the engineering to match not only a larger compressor wheel, but to a larger turbine and vane assembly. Remember, the geometry of the exhaust side determines how much horsepower you can drive off that turbine efficiently. It's really nice to see under heavy load scenarios where you're really working the truck to see vane position drop into the 20s, into the teens, down to 0% I've seen really get that turbine out of the way and really make the most efficient use of the turbine horsepower. I cannot overstate enough how well matched the compressor and turbine wheels are and how well this turbocharger drives compared to stock. I liken the upgrade from, uh, you know, from when you go from the stock truck to tune only and you're like, wow, the truck feels lighter on its feet, it responds well. That jump is the same from going from a stock turbocharger tune to a MAP sensor and DT44 on top of that. It's another jump. The truck feels lighter on its feet, it's more fun to drive, you're laying up top, the thing really sucks you in the seat, and EGTs aren't out of control. You'll see in a second on a spirited drive that this turbocharger moves so much more up top that it manages EGTs under higher load better. On the factory turbocharger, I could get the EGT probe in the manifold up to 1500 degrees like this. This turbocharger, while it will climb to 1000, 1100, 1200 degrees Fahrenheit in the manifold, it starts to plateau right about there. The highest I've seen under heavy load is 1360 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, again, lower than you would get on a, on a max effort tune on a stock turbocharger. First scenario is taken off from a traffic light. The turbocharger lights exceptionally quick. Truck picks up speed, very low fueling input. Truck performs well. Here's your second scenario, you're merging onto the highway, you're maybe 50% of the throttle, truck hammers down, picks up speed, moves out well. And here's the final scenario. This is what everybody wants to see. This is a full fuel run, uh, tune four, hammering down, enjoy. The roads are a little wet. Tune four. I have gotten quite a few questions in regards to fuel economy, whether it's changed for better or worse. I have not noticed any change in my fuel economy since installing the DT44. As of now, again, just over 5,000 miles. My dash shows about 30.3 miles per gallon average, and that's a mixture of 60-40 uh, city highway. I also got quite a few questions in regards to the noise of the truck, and I will say you know, this truck does have an aftermarket exhaust system. However, the turbocharger contributes very little to the level of noise compared to stock. Uh, here's a video with the windows up, going down the road, cruise control set, 70-something miles an hour. It will know that you will hear more of the S&B auxiliary scoop than you do drone or any sort of noise in the turbocharger. For those with a similar setup who are looking to gauge how loud this truck is, it's similar to that of a stock turbocharger with the similar modifications. This is me 
talking in a normal speaking voice. I know in the last video, a lot of people were commenting on how loud the exhaust was. Quite honestly, I hear the S and B uh, intake auxiliary scoop down in the uh, passenger where the feet go uh, more so than I do the exhaust. And, and certainly, I'm not screaming. You can certainly have conversation with people inside the truck, listen to music normally, and you know, not be beat up by the noise. One area where I was not able to evaluate this turbocharger is towing. I seldom tow with this, and when I do, it's barely light, usually just a toy hauler with a couple bikes on it. However, Matthew Cook of the Facebook page, his name is here, his Instagram here is here. He tows with this semi-regularly. He's just picked up a Honda Talon, congrats. He is also a DT44 enjoyer, and you could reach out to him on Facebook, and he would have some more towing data if that's what you're interested in knowing. He also sent me this sweet boosted launch video. Now, it should be noted that his truck is on 33s. It's got a 600 pounds worth of shit in the bed, but it does have uh, the RevMax converter, and, and Matthew's a very particular on how his truck shifts, so he's gone through several transmission tumor revisions specifically related to the torque converter clutch lockup. Anyways, here's a boosted launch. Enjoy. <laughs> In summary, I cannot say enough great things about this turbocharger. If you're looking for a turbocharger that spools exactly like stock, but with the potential to make much more power up top, this is the turbocharger for you. It's priced less than even the Garrett PowerMax on the market, although you have to provide your own actuator, but chances are you have a working actuator. It eliminates the thin blades on the compressor wheel and it eliminates the little notch in the, in the compressor cover where oil tends to build up and freeze and, and knock away your compressor blades. I've run this truck with a stock turbocharger tune. It still has the stock turbocharger transmission tune, so it doesn't require a radical transmission tune to drive nice. And I've run it now with a map sensor and fueling adjustments. In all scenarios, the, the turbocharger performs well. It should be noted if you want to take advantage of the top end of this turbocharger, you will need a map sensor and a retune on top of that to take advantage of that sensor. In my opinion, that's totally worth it. You can really tell that a lot of engineering went into matching not only a larger compressor wheel to this, but a, a matched turbine to make this turbocharger drive just like stock, but with more power up top. Of course, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. You can find me on all the 2.0 liter Facebook pages and reach out to Matthew Cook if you have towing specific uh, related questions. This has been a quick long-term review of the DT44 Turbo. I think it's king on the market. There really is nothing else that's well engineered that provides this level of flexibility between low speed performance and high speed performance. Thank you all for watching. I do have one quick thing for those who stuck around to the end of the video to show you real quick. This is a parts preview on some other project that's going to come up here in the not so distant future. This video is sponsored by Frank's Kink Emporium and Industrial Equipment Repair. I get questions all the time asking when tuning supports can be available for three liter Duramaxes. Guys, I don't know. I'm not a tuning company. I'm not involved with tuning. Maybe if you pray to Xenu, he will bless you like he has blessed the 2.8 liter crowd. <laughs>